Welcome to a show about things you can see without going far, and a lot of them are free. If you thought there was nothing in the old heartland, you ought to hit the black op with these fools in a van. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Randy does the steering so he won't hurl. Mike's got the map, such a man of the world. That's done with the camera, kind of heavy on his shoulder. And that giant ball of tape, it's a world record holder. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out art in their own backyard. Look out, they're driving hard, checking out the world in their own backyard. Checking out the world in their own backyard. We're going to stop. we got a great stop plan here. First thing out of the gate this morning. Well, planned would be too big of a word, but we've, we're going to stop. Yeah. Give us a golly, Doug. Golly. Dear TV Mailbag, how's my gomer? Hi, Don the Camera Guy here, trapped with two goobers who claim to be producers, now in a state where we've never been before. This is Mount Airy, boyhood home of Andy Griffith and birthplace in a sense of Mayberry itself. You wouldn't believe the number of people that love having their picture taken. Oh, I'm going to have mine taken. Well, yeah, that's a given. Life, that's a lifeless given. form of Andy. <laughs> but what a remarkable man. You have to admit it. He did everything from drama to comedy. He could sing everything from gospel to opera. 95% of the people that walk through my front door are here because of the Andy Griffith connection. We thought it was for the food. We well, heard your breakfast were really good. When they good. find out about the food, the snappy lunch, that wonderful pork chop sandwich. <laughs> Where are you aiming that camera? Your hands, because you were doing this. <laughs> you were doing the hands. <laughs> we have three impressive rooms of memorabilia. We even have a slingshot back there on the wall that Andy's father made for him. Golly! These are our shots from behind the scenes, never before shown pictures. Shazam! Emmett will tell you his most prized possession is the Matlock suit in the corner. That's because that's the one item in the collection Andy himself sent. Andy shilling steaks and Andy shilling craft cheese. And that's like he didn't meet a product. Ritz crackers. It's good. There's always been speculation as to whether Mayberry came from the name Mount Airy. Well, they do sound similar, there's no doubt about it. But then when we found out that Andy's mother was from Mayberry, we thought, well, you know, maybe he got the idea from that. Wow. Do you think? <laughs> How long uh, did that take? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with this picture? Where's when was Andy last here? Yeah, we hate to. Uh, uh, the last time that we know he was here was when they did a parade in his honor in '57. Yeah, wouldn't that be like 45 years, years ago? <laughs> <laughs> the way we look at it, Andy <laughs> likes his privacy. Andy, 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 come home, please, come on, come on home. As TV weasels, we will do our best yes, to well, bring we're... Andy Griffith back to Mount Airy. Could be tricky, though we're already in the research phase. For example, we've learned that Andy loves hot dogs, but batter dip weenies. Did Andy eat corn dogs? That's our question. No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You get the goods? And apparently pork chop sandwiches aren't sufficient bait either since Emmett's been serving them at the snappy lunch all along. They're good enough for the boys, however, who are ingesting cholesterol with a vengeance. What do you think? Right. This vegetarian politely declined, wiped some goo off the lens, and proceeded to search for sustenance elsewhere. So far on this culinary tour of the South, I've come to rely on certain snack foods. And if worse comes to worst, I am toting this government-issued doomsday meal in a bag. 
On a positive note, somewhere near Mayadan, I did snag a prime piece of Tar Heel produce suitable for preventing scurvy. Yes, you want to put this melon on the dashboard? Yeah, we'll get good and warm and juicy. But food will Lord have to mine. wait, since from all indications, this is the place we've come looking for, Benny Carter's. Benny's been busy. Benny's been building for birds since the late 80s, but it wasn't until he got pink slip from his factory job that Benny took up folk art full time. The one day I just, I said, I believe I'll see if I can paint something. And I painted a painting. And I started painting a little bit, and I still build a lot of bird houses. I'm a big flea market man and yard sale. That's where I get a lot of my stuff. Well, like these heads here, they're gourds. And I use a lot of buttons. Well, that one up there says Virginia's for lovers. I'm not really sure, but I guess it is. And then some chest pieces on this one's head over here. And I buy a lot of old earrings and just all kind of stuff like that, you know. I paint on some conventional type stuff sometimes. I like to paint on canvases. It's, it's real easy painting on a good new canvas, but I very seldom use them. Most of the time I, I paint over other people's paintings. You know, some of these artists do stuff in like 15 minutes, and I've had them tell me, you know, that they paint something in 15 minutes, and I say, well, I can't even get set out in 15 minutes, you know, much less paint something. People ask me, say, oh, well, how come you paint the, you know, the Statue of Liberty black and uh, Jesus black and so on and so forth, and I, I got more black paint than I have any other color, you know. But I dress the Statue of Liberty up. Sometimes she's got a crown on. She's got blonde hair. She's got red hair. That's the thing about self-taught art. You can do whatever you want to do. That's what I tell you. I do whatever I want to do, you know. That's not a birdhouse. It's a birdhouse. It is a birdhouse, see? Yeah, see? Probably got huh. bucket tweets. That's a gomer bird. I got some big woodpeckers, and there's a lot of Carolina bluebirds up here, and Carolina wrens, and the chickadees, and all kind of birds use all these birdhouses. Now you think this is an environment? You wait till you enter that house right there if you want to see an environment. Go ahead and open that door and get you a little peek, so you won't be too shocked when you go in. Oh my. I don't concentrate as much on painting as I used to, although I paint quite a bit. But then I take spells now to where I stop painting. Sometimes, maybe for a month or two, I won't paint uh, hardly at all. And then I'll get to going wide open and I'll, I'll paint for a month, 15, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. So I just do it, you know. Uh, if people come and buy it, they come and buy it. If they don't, they don't, you know. That's what I want is people, you know. I like for people to come and see me, you know. Even with all this in the yard, Benny says he's best known around town for his cool cars, one of which he rolled out for a quick joy ride with us. Great to gawk at, but even harder to maneuver in than our cramped Chrysler minivan to which I soon return. Wanna come in and smoke? We're headed yeah, now for on. High Point, the heart of furniture making country and home to another of those world's largest that Randy gets so excited about. Now is that a bureau or a chest of drawers? That's a, that's a chest of drawers. That's one snappy dresser. Don, did you, did you show them it's big? That's how big the dresser is. Wow. I am so excited we came all the way to see this. I think this should help. If you know how large the world's largest ball of videotape is, then you know how big the, the bureau is in comparison. Yeah. Does that help? You know how big your head is. <laughs> Where's the big coffee pot? Right, right, well, it's right there, but. We are on a roll, aren't we? And once again, thanks to the kindness of strangers, hot on the trail of another piece of America's oversized past. It's a colonial big coffee pot. 
That's almost as exciting as the big dresser last night. There it is, big coffee pot. Okay. Woo! But I think people need scale. And I think Randy needs to screen his tips more carefully. At any rate, we soon Free left these quaint surroundings yeah. in search of actual art. We've come here to meet Benny Carter's good buddy, Sam McMillan, better known as the Dot Man, for reasons that will soon become apparent. Stand by Sam's place. I've been in business 40, 45 years. I was in the antique business for 30 some years. Where I got my business from, I show for 20 years. See, I show for one job for 20 years. I'd ride in the front seat and I'd, I'd get all this out of the back seat. And so I got a PhD degree on, on, on business. So when did the painting urge hit you? Uh, it was back in the uh, 80s um, when I started painting. Because I'd been creative about all my life. See, what I did, I, I used to build houses too. Got the sixth grade education, build houses. When I go to the flea market, I look at something, I know what I can do with it when I look at it. One, I look at the thing one time, I come home and draw it. Pretty much looks to me like you'll paint on anything. Anything you put down, I paint. I paint on plaster, glass, and everything. They okay. call me Dot Man, though. Did, did Benny tell you? They, see, that's my trademark. But see, you got a lot of artists not doing this. I'm the first one to start doing it. But it does, see, I learn them. I teach them how to do it. This, this is the overcoat. I got coats over the house to match this. this Man, one, that's awesome. That's what I do classes in. What don't you paint? <laughs> paint everything. That's the thing that's killing me here. I paint everything. What do you think? I think it's you. Does it go with my, my shirt? Hey. <laughs> kind of runway model here for me, Donnie. I love people and I enjoy what I do. What I do, I try to help other artists and help other people. Dude, I'm bringing some cut back here. You don't jump up on a meter now, you hear me? Okay, roll over. Roll over, Gene. Roll over. Roll over. Now give me some fun. Now have you painted on, on that dog? Not yet. How many miles on this baby? It had 300,000 when I got it. And it's got uh, your town right here on it. Yep. Other side is Alabama. This is my church up here. It has pews in it. The Church of Sam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the bathtub. Our show has many faucets. This lights up at night. Really? See, see the back porch lights on now, but it comes on at night. So you've really just made a whole world here, it yeah. looks like to me. That's what I did. Do you have any trouble with all these pieces getting no, messed around? Nobody won't touch it. You put it out there and stay out all night, and they won't touch it. I had some stuff not painted out there, and they take it. <laughs> but as soon as I put my name on it, they can't sell it. They broke in my house and took my VCR, TV, microwave oven. I went back and painted the TV, the microwave oven, everything. VCR, it broke in again, didn't touch that. <laughs> Knowing that Sam is ever ready with his brush, it was inevitable that negotiations would occur. World's largest ball of videotape. Yeah, I can paint that. Could you paint on that? Yes, I can paint that. How would it look? I don't know. It looked like Sam did. Yeah, where'd you get that from? We made this. Oh, God. You want to you carry it in then? Oh, I don't know. I think I'll just put it back here and make Don's life more uncomfortable. All right, well, I'll paint it for you and ship it to you. <laughs> it's easy to see why Sam is beloved by young and old alike and Easy enough to get from Sam's place back downtown where something civic next to the bus station sounds worth seeing. <laughs> wow. It's the Mr. Imagination wall. All I know about it is that it was Mr. Imagination's and I, we've never met him. Um, I'm, we're hoping to get to meet him on one of these future shows here coming up. He's, imagine uh, that. Yeah, imagine that, exactly. People from all over the city apparently brought items and memories to down to put into the wall, and then I guess he did it 
I don't know if he had any help or not, but he did it. It's his baby. Are you reading this again? No, I, I, I went inside and I checked it out. I looked on the, and I asked, I asked him for some help from the woman at the counter. So they taught me this in journalism school. Look at all the cool stuff. A token of my esteem. There's a Bic lighter. Man, you could just look at that forever. Hold I think up. I see where what happened to the 18 and a half minute gap. There it is. Famous 18 and a half minute uh, Nixon tape gap. I say we stonewall them. <laughs> As you might imagine, there's not much parking around here, so we walked some more, then did some driving. About an hour south to the town of Troutman. Call it coincidence, but we're here to find a fisherman, or at least Hubert Walters used to be back in Jamaica. Now he makes art, drives an ice cream truck, and seldom fishes at all. I work all over the place, inside, outside, but I mostly keep them, keep most of the artwork inside. My goodness. You do build some boats. Yeah, I make them with bando, wood, metal, sheet metal, different things. I like to work stuff with my hand. I like to mess with wood, wood and concrete. These don't look like none of the boat that we build in Jamaica. The boat we build in Jamaica, they, they has a lot of work. It got a lot of inside work to do. Nobody made these. These are just something I made up. <laughs> How big is this? Well, this must be about five feet long. What about tonnage, though? Isn't that anything No, not that, not that heavy. <laughs> it's not that heavy. It really, it's hollow inside, not that heavy. What are, what are the crew people doing here? Those are bad. This is a band. They, 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 they're on the cruise boat. They're playing the music. Those are music men. I like to put my own, my own you know, feelings into the paint. I don't copy not for, much for nobody. I just, just think they really appeal to me. This is my kind of big band. This is not England kind of, this is right kind of big man. You gotta open the arch, put on that thing, and let, let it loose, the arch go down. So it closed on there now, the arch is closed down, batten down for the weather. That's that old saying, batten down the hatches. Yes, batten down the hatches. You got a pretty good batten average? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Truth is, there's nothing average about the art Hubert has out here at all. Figural forms, kooky clocks, and a fabulous fleet. But since this is just a half-hour show, we must now get our basses out of Troutman and back on the road. Hey, look who's here. I brought you coffee and a muffin. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the muffin. Whoa, it's a little Thumbelina muffin. <laughs> it is. Looks like food is a prime topic once again. Speaking of which, I seem to be missing one musky melon. Okay, it was smelling up the entire motel, but isn't this a bit extreme? And speaking of extreme, looks like Randy's found yet another big dumb thing. I was wondering why we were carting these gloves around. We should have worn our half gallon hat. You think the people who don't like to see us playing catch will like us better because there's a big milk thing in the shot? This is sort of our pet project. But you know, when milk turns, it can be an ugly sight. Oh, oh there's oh. nothing sour. So Burlington may have the big milk, but Bynum, south of Chapel Hill, has Clyde Jones, and that's where we're going next. Population-wise, it's tiny. But in terms of art per square inch, it just might lead the nation. Wow. Thanks to Mr. Jones, a former mill worker turned international folk art icon. You got started kind of due to an injury, didn't you? Wasn't it something that I happened was, to you? I got hurt with a broken leg. It tore his leg off piece, and now I got a chance to do it, and I went doing it. So some of that logging experience probably came in handy here, it looks like. Well. Nature and the wood come in handy, seeing animals in wood, but maybe nature handing it down to me. You call this the Hall River Animal Crossing, don't you? Critter Crossing. Critter Crossing. Mm -hmm. It got uh, mingos, wild cows, goats, pigs, dogs, you name it. I want you on a horse. 
Now, why do you want me on a horse, Clyde? Because you look like a horse rider. <laughs> 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 Woohoo! It looks yeah. like once you start on something, there may be no stopping you. It, it ain't no stopping to me in the saw we wall. <laughs> what kind of saw are you using? Steel. Have you gone through a few blades on that? I haven't worn out but one or two since I've been doing this. I'm used to running saw, taking care of them, stuff like that. They're called chains. Yeah, that'd be chains, not blades. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't do a lot of sawing. Mostly. <laughs> no, I spend most of my time on horses. Yeah. Looks like some glitter and stuff in here. Yeah, I use a lot of glitter and stuff. And you know what they are, don't you? That bird's all from cherry trees, tennis balls, and artificial fruit. Are these film canisters? What? Yeah, they come from California. People save it for me. They save all kinds of odds and ends. See what I can do with it. You, you just can't walk through here without seeing something that's pretty amazing. That's what I like about well, it. Well, you go through here 50 times, you're going to see a different something every time you go through here. See, what I'm doing, I'm staying close to nature if I can. It's, it's working out to be close to an animal. Well, I'd like to know when you started painting, too, it looks like. Well, it's a good question on that house. I started 10, 10 years ago painting. And the painting's up with the critters you buy. They, they're both rolling. Y'all go anyway, do as you please, have a good time. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, we'll still be buddy. The animal kingdom cannot be contained in Clyde's yard alone. Most yards in town harbor a critter or two and most, if not all, neighbors enjoy the notoriety that comes their way. It's a very unique thing. I mean, people who have never been to Bynum will come and their eyes get big. Oh, our grandchildren just love to come and go through his yard and climb all over his animals, and he encourages that. So they're built to last. They'll show you, Gil. You can just kick him and do him any way you want to. If you get about 50, 60 youngins in here and they don't come apart, you know you ain't done no wrong. How famous is this critter crossing? It's been in books and on CDs, and once this well-known dancer even stopped by. Clyde's got a great story about that, but once again, time is a factor, since we've got to go north to Prospect Hill and the stone delight called Shangri-La. 27 leprechaun-sized structures built by a tobacco farmer named Henry Warren. Henry passed away nearly 20 years ago, but his white rock extravaganza is still standing strong. So did you just look out here one day and go, uh-oh. <laughs> he started right there on Easter Monday morning. He didn't want to he didn't want to celebrate Easter. He didn't want to go anywhere or do anything. So he started on that. He saw that mill, the wheel, in Hillsboro. And he built the mill a house. So that's the mill house. That's the first one he did. You see all those pretty white stones, big stones in there. Next thing he built was the dwelling house. And somebody from uh, South Carolina came by one day and wanted to buy it. And he said, well, you can't move it. It has 27 bags of cement and sand in it. That was the theater over there. And the fire station over there. Oh. This was a school. Built that for Watergate. That was the Watergate. And this is a church over here, a little brand church in the Vale. Back up here a second. That's the Watergate? Yes. <laughs> they just named that Watergate after Nixon when he was in there. So Mill House and Watergate. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I see a pattern. And see, he made the stove and the little grill and the chairs. He said that was mom and pop seat right there. And that's some sort of farm implement part? Mm -hmm. That's a drill. Oh, it's a saw. And he wasn't making drawings or plans no. or anything? No. <laughs> Didn't leave He'd behind come it. down here and start, he'd measure this off where the, the length and the width and he wanted it. He'd start from right there and go up. Somehow he looked well, he, at it. He just loved rock. That was the idea. Was Shangri-La's favorite movie? No, I think he got that from Roosevelt, you know, had his Shangri-La in the war. How old was he when he started doing this? 75. Oh, my goodness. He died when he was 84. Oh, say that again. Tell me that again. He was 75. When most guys are sitting in front of the TV. Well, he didn't sit in front of the TV. He was an avid cigarette smoking a Coca-Cola drinker. So cigarettes don't kill you. 
Coca-Cola does. No, I don't think Coca-Cola does either. <laughs> so do you look out here and, and remember Henry, or do you I look do. out here and? I do come down here and mow the lawn or plant the flowers and remember him down here, I sure do. Henry did have some help from a neighbor, but none from the missus, except, and I hope those weasels are listening, she made him stop and eat lunch. Did I mention I was hungry? This is Don the Camera Guy, signing off. Own a copy of the companion book to Rare Visions, complete with tips on where to find food, fun, and fascinating folks. It's just like the TV show, only it doesn't move. For information about the artists, wacky sites, and how you can see them for yourself, go to kcpt.org. Rotational, over the milk. Talk to him. We're in Biscuitville. <laughs> it's come to this, has it? It's come to this. <laughs>